please welcome Tico Najan Wilson and Danielle Brown. I'm on this side. I don't recall the music this morning on my first segment. <laughs> it's not. I want to do it again. It was for you because. <laughs> We are here with someone really special. So this is Danielle with uh, Bowie State University, but I want you to tell us what you do, your position there. Oh, wonderful. Um, I'm in Bowie State University at Bowie, Maryland. I'm a fashion design professor. How long have you been there? Oh, I've been at Bowie almost five years. I've been teaching fashion about 12. So it goes quickly when you're having fun. I just love my job. I love that. So tell me, what, what incentives and initiatives have you guys taken? to support the students? Uh, well, at Bowie State, a lot of our students are first generation going to college. Okay. So of course, with the initial uh, fees that you have just going to college, in addition to that, just the cost of textbooks. Um, then of course, your child comes home and says, oh, by the way, I'm studying fashion design. So it's additional <laughs> uh, resources and money. So our incentives, my students actually do not have a large opportunity to turn down sustainability. So we encourage upcycling because for the simple fact, they really do not have a huge choice sometimes, just dealing with you know, the financials of college to begin with. So with upcycling, um, you know, that's just taking what you already have, using your resources, what you have, and turning it into something amazing. Wow. And the fashion students, they use their creativity and it's out of this world where they're getting to the point where they're upcycling and they have this fashion design line at the end uh, for their senior showcase. And that's coming from recycled goods. So, you know, we don't have to motivate them so much where they're using their resources because they really simply don't have a choice in certain situations. So it's almost a blessing in disguise. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I know it makes me, like I'm not gonna go off script, but it makes me think of us, Yes. right? And how we make do yes. with so much. How many of you could, you feel that? Like you, you make do, right? You know how to make do. Give it up, yes. So, I mean, for these students to just and, know it right. naturally. And you have limited resources, but you don't let that limit you. And I think with that, your creativity just increases. Your mind has to go into a different realm almost. Um, and so always use that. Don't, don't take limited resources as a negative thing. Yeah. And um, then you have this beautiful result. So it's almost like this existed before it became a, a thing, right? Yes, Sustainability. yes. It's so new to it's, a lot of people. I was going to wonder new. about that. I was going to ask, <laughs> yeah, yeah, some things feel extremely trendy. Yeah. And then so the way you speak of it, it's like a built-in something. Right. So what challenges have you noticed or do you guys face with trying to teach sustainability? Yeah, I think it's trying to teach sustainability at the same time of keeping up with the trends. Mm -hmm. So if I'm teaching, I, I teach a textiles course, for example. Okay. If I'm teaching how to dye naturally, um, you know, just using the resources we have around them, whether it's grass or leaves or coffee beans, um, you know, and to the point where your students, you know, you're having a good time, you're dyeing these things, but if it's trendy to wear hot pink, how am I going to naturally dye something hot pink? Mm -hmm. So you end up coming into this challenge where people will shop, the consumer will shop based on what's the fashionable color or what looks better instead of keeping in mind, well, this was made in a sustainable way. Hmm. Okay. So we cross that challenge a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just using dye as an example, but it's really many things. Right, and I love the so coffee. I'm sorry. Yeah, they, they die with yes. coffee. This yes, this is pretty it's a whole, You have to take this textiles class. <laughs> or I'll just come visit you <laughs> and sit do. in. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I will do that. I will do that. So, what tools, if any, do you supply the students in order so, to meet this market? Yeah, the the tools that we have at Bowie State in in the costume shop, we've been very blessed to have. Um, we have a laundry room, and I also have a dye room, and so they have these resources at hand where they can use the dye baths in there. Um, we also work closely with our theater department. Mm -hmm. So when one of their plays close, uh, we can say, okay, what are the costumes that you have left over? Can we upcycle those? You know, so nothing's really going to waste. Yeah. And then we also try to work with certain companies. I had a student that worked with Spoonflower, for example. And they're a company where you can print your own design on the fabric. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's eco-friendly fabric or recycled materials they let you choose. And so we try to expose our students to opportunities like that. Mm -hmm. And then we've been very blessed with 
a bunch of donations. Um, and it's wonderful to have because we can put them to use. There's um, a report I, I read, and um, it's Fashion on Climate Report. Okay. It's very interesting, but in there it said 92 million tons of clothing a year. Wait, 92 million tons? tons? Yes, get thrown into landfills. I don't and even I'm know what thinking, a ton looks like. That just right. feels like a lot. Exactly, and I'm like, can I just get a couple buses and just fill that up and bring it to our school? Because for some, you know, college students, they're limited resources True. while resources are getting thrown away into landfills. And so it's amazing that you find reports and you see certain things like that, and you could use it to your benefit. So I think a lot of it also can come down to just a communication. Who mm -hmm. needs this before we throw it away? And so, and so the guest that was speaking before, we were sitting and we heard them talk about fat, I mean, fabrics, yes. right? And donating yes. fabrics. Do you guys take in fabrics from Absolutely. companies and even maybe independent designers yes. when they're done? Like, I'm Absolutely. sure every piece matters, yes, right? Every, there, uh, there's no such thing as a scrap piece of fabric. Okay. We use every little thing. Um, and yes, we accept wonderful donations. We've been benefited. Un unfortunately, some companies had to close because of the pandemic. Um, and they called us and emailed us. I have all this fabric. I'm shutting down my fabric store. I'm shutting down my sewing studio. And it was unfortunate, but they said we want it to go to a good place. And we know you will use it. And we've had the opportunity to use fabric that is amazing, never been touched. And also hmm. reuse some of the garments that some of the clothing stores just did not sell. Just didn't sell. So um, it's good because at the end of the day, it was done in a sus sustainable way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, OK, so to go rogue again. Um, if someone wanted to donate, how would they do that? Um, oh, I believe can, in putting our, our yes. actions where our mouth is. You so if, how would they do this? My email is dbrown at bluestate.edu. It dings on my phone every time I hear it. Please email me. Do not throw anything away. I can come to you. Um, I I <laughs> because I do believe right in, you know, again, the students can use these resources um, easily and create that fashion line for their senior collection. So I think that's great. So, so what would you say if you had to prioritize a, a main component of moving sustainable fashion forward? What would that be? And if you if you have more than one, we have okay. time for you to give me because I know your face looks like one. Did you see my prioritize? face? How do I narrow it down? Give us your top two to three. Um, creativity. Okay. Um, because you do need to use your resources as much as you can and, mm -hmm. and to the best of its ability, um, and also just. When you think about just like fair trade or reusing clothing, it's that um, consumer being conscious yeah. of what they're purchasing or what they're doing mm -hmm. that really makes a difference. And mm -hmm. I think we all need to kind of set aside a moment where we're thinking, how can I reroute this in a way that it right. benefits? Okay. Okay. I tried to narrow it. <laughs> no, 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 but I want, I want you to go deeper with that. Like when you say reroute this, like well, how, do, how, do, how can we really make this practical? Yeah, so I think it comes down to working with different companies, like you were saying before, with companies that they just are not aware of um, the demand mm -hmm. for the supplies that they do not lo no longer need. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's all in communication, networking, different things like that, where if you put your need out there, a lot of times people say, oh, I have that, I have that sitting around, you know? And so that's really, really Really important and then you can reroute the narrative where instead of they're dumping you know a collection got canceled and they're dumping that into the landfill instead of that rerouting it to an HBCU that may need those resources so they so. really dump these things. oh yeah you should see the pictures it's it's very interesting and and I thought the number I, I had to go back because I thought, I thought the number was fake um, and it's not, and the pictures are disturbing. You're like, it's not. So, so then how, how, what would that look like in direct support of the fashion institutes or the fashion that's, that's on the campuses of HBCUs? How yes. would that look? Um, I think it's support. just the matter of, again, like just communicating in that donation. I think it's, a, I hate to say it, but to be honest, it's a win-win okay. because you're gonna get rid of your supplies anyway if you're that designer that just have overruns. Um, and I think it makes sense to just reach out to the different HBCUs. Hey, we're throwing these out. Do you need them? Mm -hmm. Anything like that. And I think you should begin that partnership. What you have to realize when you're dealing with designers that with limited resources, these are your best designers mm -hmm. because they have to make it work mm -hmm. because this is it. I can't mm -hmm. buy any more fabric. Mm -hmm. And so in that case, that can work out for the person that's donating that fabric. They can 
redo your entire line out of something you donated, and it can be better than when you gave it to them, mm -hmm. and now you want to work with them one-on-one, -on -one, and that could be amazing. So it's all in the partnership and believing in that young designer, that young designer mind. Um, and, and again, just realizing the blessing of a limited resource. Yeah, yeah. I, every time you say limited resource, I get excited, because I do yes. believe that's where innovation happens yes. uh, when you don't have tons. It's easy when you have so much to work yes. with, right? But it's another thing when you don't have Oh. everything mm -hmm. and then what the next person may have to work with and when you're working with limited so it's, exactly. it's interesting um okay so our last question but we have some time so where do you see fashion going it with the students black fashion if you want to dig into that and then because we have a different spice and flair yes and yes so. and it's a really good flair <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so um i think that more people will get on board um, mm -hmm. To be honest, I think, um, again, in the same report that I read, it was saying 43% of Gen Z, they shop with sustainability in mind. But that's not enough. And that's only 43% of Gen Z. And then the same thing, you have executives. That one, I think 65% of your executives, they have committed or thought about committing investing in like your eco-friendly fabrics and recycled materials. And again, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. But I think it will be trendy, kind of like when everybody's, oh, you're going natural with your hair, I'll go natural with my hair. You know, and I think mm -hmm. it will catch on. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I'm hoping it does. And I think it will be the thing to do, mm -hmm. which is to, you know, at one point it was shop, small brands mm -hmm. and then you had a big wave with shop black brands mm -hmm. and then I think it will turn out to be shop the sustainable brands or the recycled materials and different mm -hmm. things like that so I do see fashion going in the correct direction mm -hmm. I think it is um, in our power to make sure that happens yes um, I realize as a professor how important my job is because I'm sending the future out and so if I send them out thinking incorrectly 92 million tons is going to be nothing. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to make sure I instill with them, you know, what's really important as far as recycled material and using your environment and, and what you have. Because, of course, at this point, we have to meet our needs, but we do have to make sure it's in a way we're not compromising the next generation to meet their needs. Mm -hmm. And that's happening a lot. And so it's like going round and round, and we're going into this kind of deep hole. So um, the future, I think, is bright. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just needs to be something that needs to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're going Wait, in the Wait, stop there. What's, what part should be acknowledged? Oh. Us, so we know we're acknowledging it. <laughs> yes. Um, the honesty. Um, again, it's just very eye-opening if you look into how much different companies are throwing away, um, different companies are taking advantage of. Mm -hmm. um, and I think once you realize that, it kind of puts it in the forefront when you know the history of it. Mm -hmm. um, and you think a little bit different, you know, and um, it's, it's weird, but when the whole thing with the paper straws came out, everybody's like, what's the big deal with paper straws? Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how New York is, but DC is paper straws everywhere. Um, and they made it I such like a big it. deal. Yeah, same. <laughs> they made it such a big deal. Um, and it made you kind of look into the history. Okay, why are we going to paper straws? Mm -hmm. And then when she started researching, you realize how much it was affecting the planet or the mm -hmm. animals and different things. And it was eye-opening. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing will happen with fashion. Um, it happens a lot when we're looking into particular bags being made out of particular animals, you know, mm -hmm. PETA and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And it's eye-opening. And I think that that needs to be in the forefront more. Um, just so we're realizing what's happening and try to go a different way with it. Um, so again, just being a professor, I have an important job to put that in the forefront, but I'm not teaching the world, right? Not right, 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 right. <laughs> but you want the world to not educate yet. themselves yes, at the same time. Yes, yes, exactly. And you do have to take the time to educate yourself. Um, and just sit down with some of the designers. You'll be surprised. I've walked in plenty of stores, and you know, you see a white t-shirt, and you're like, why is this white t-shirt $150? Mm -hmm. It's a white t-shirt. But then when you sit and talk with the designer and realize the importance behind that white yes. t-shirt, yes. then you're like, it's, it's not even priced correctly. You should be charging more. More for this right. t-shirt. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that needs to happen yeah. more often. Yeah. Um, and I think that's everyone's role. Yeah, and I like what you said about the honesty. It, it almost makes me think of um, separating trend from truth. Yeah. Um, because there's trend in a lot of things, yes. right? And then there's truth that could be found in it. Yes. But it's also different. So it may not match up, right? right. Truth might not match up to trend. And so right. it's kind of like not outing those companies, but the companies that are doing it for trend, but mm -hmm. it's not really a truth 
based on the history or the facts right. that we could we could dig into. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I was saying before. The sustainability and upcycling, that's not new, especially for an HPCU, for African Americans, and for a lot of different cultures. You had to do with what was around you. You had to do with what you had. And hand-me-downs, yeah. right? Exactly. Like we, oh, you, we understood yes. hand-me-downs. <laughs> yes. I mean, I was really excited. And it excited. was not a bad thing. No, it was not a bad <laughs> thing. You actually went to your friend's closet yes. for your siblings. And I have to say, I was really excited that I was the only girl growing up because I yes. did not have to. But at the same time, <laughs> I learned to sew. Not that fashion was my thing. Uh-huh. It's just that it became easier, like, oh, I can make something yes. very similar for way less money right. if I take my mom's dr- old dress right. and flip it so you're right. And I have a teen daughter now who, oh, love d- her thing, you know, Depop or some of those websites uh-huh. where it's like you buy the used and, you know, <laughs> yes. that thing. And so it's, it's but we do this. Yes. It's <laughs> we nothing, do this. It's, it's not. It's nothing new. And it's becoming trendy. Um, and that's why I was saying I think the future of fashion is promised mm. because you're going to want to do what's somebody's doing next to you. It's Wait, I like that. Show. Say that one more time, because you know we have a we have a virtual audience too. So somebody <laughs> should tweet that or something out there. I forgot what I you said. said. You said that you think the future is promised. Yes, it's, it's, it is mm-hmm. promised. The future of fashion is it's promised. promised. Yes. I, I like that. Um, and again, it is up to us, but I think that it will catch on. And, and you see that with different trends, different designers. Oh, because they're wearing it or because there's a line out the door. Mm-hmm. The shoe is probably not even that cute, but so many people want it, so I also want it. And I think you'll start to see designers using sustainable, sustainability practices, mm-hmm. and other designers will say, well, they're selling really good over there. Mm-hmm. Let me start to do that over here. Mm-hmm. And we all know fashion repeats. So yes. the thrift store also is not new. Um, a lot of people think it is. Vintage. <laughs> right. Vint- oh, yes, I'm sorry. It's called vintage. <laughs> Back in the day when I went, it was called it was a all thrift, thrift. store. <laughs> <laughs> And now sometimes they'll call it secondhand, Mm -hmm. uh, depending on the area you're in. Mm -hmm. It was called a thrift store. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes they're overpriced, which is insane, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. a whole other uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But, you know, with these thrift stores, I think that uh, they're being rediscovered. Mm -hmm. And I think that this new generation is like, oh, that's a Mm -hmm. thing. But fashion repeats. What we're wearing now, you'll see it again in a couple years. What you have in your closet... I know my mom before has said, I had a dress just like that. I had a, a shirt just like that. And we're going to say it to the next generation. So those thrift stores are important because they really are setting how fashion goes and how it has been going. Yes. So you really just need to go into a thrift store if you want to see the future. Yeah. It's in the past. Yeah. And so it's really easy to see that. It, the future is in the past. It's so true because it's 90s fashion. Oh, yes. But I graduated in 94 and I told my daughter, like, never. No, <laughs> once you've done it as an adult, yes. I don't know if you should do it. <laughs> And that's just when, when they started coming out with color blocking, I was like, "Do they not know cross colors?" Like, I told my age, right? And and they were like, "Have you ever heard Professor Brown? Have you seen this?" And I was like, "That's cross colors." Like, go back, look at the TLC video. And actually, it was before that, but that's a whole other. That's a whole other. Yeah. That's a fashion history course I teach. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, it's nothing new, and it will repeat. So what I'm hoping that will happen is that you do have this sustainable fashion, you have the natural dyes, you have these different things that are happening, and I hope it continues to repeat. And, mm-hmm. and that 43% of the generation goes up to 50 and 70, and then 100, and then you're frowned upon if you're not wearing sustainable fashion. Okay, because you did say what's enough earlier. Yes. You said it's not enough, and I was going to ask. It's not enough. What would, look, what would it look like to be enough? What would that look like? 100%. <laughs> which, which it probably will never get to, mm-hmm. just for the simple fact that we're humans and we mm-hmm. don't agree all on the same mm-hmm. thing, right, <laughs> which right, is a right, good thing. Right. But um, yeah, it, it needs to definitely be different generations and more than 43%. So do you have, with our last minute, do you have a percentage? I know Brandis once upon a time challenged me to do 20% of my closet from black designers. Yes. I for surpassed it now. Yes. I mean, that feels Wonderful. good Wonderful, yes. Um, because I always did small business, but that thing felt good. Yes. So, for you, what would that? What would it look like for us to make this intent tangible? What would a percentage? You're a teacher. Give me a oh, a hundred percent. But wait, but wait, but wait. Don't panic. For for one year, the reason why I say that is because I think that if you can go through every season for a year, doing upcycling, going to the back of your closet, way back that you haven't been to, things you haven't worn in a long time, you know, everything like that. Shop your thrift stores, Mm -hmm. secondhand stores, whatever they call it now, vintage stores, um, and shop those stores and do it for an entire year. Go through your winter, your spring, your summer, and your fall, and just try it. 
What will happen is you'll get a lot of compliments mm -hmm. because everyone, oh, that's cute. That's cute. Because everybody doesn't have it. They didn't purchase it from the commercial store that yes. everybody has the same shirt from. Not going to mm -hmm. name any. Everybody has the same mm -hmm. dress from mm -hmm. um, and so on. And so you're already going to stand out. You're going to be trendy. It's most likely going to repeat anyway. Um, and just kind of see if you can live that way. And when you do that, your pockets will look better because you're not spending a whole bunch on something that was trendy that they overpriced anyway. Hmm. I'm excited to support. I really, really am excited to support. But before we end, I a little birdie told me that we have something for you. Oh. And so I think we're going to sit right here. Or, come, yeah, something. <laughs> here comes my birdie. My birdies are flying in. I'm going to sit down. Like, not like that. Like, what is going on? Um, first of all, the conversation was incredible. And the first thing I want to do, because Diana said, I have not even introduced, so I'm going to have you guys introduce yourselves first. Yes. Castescu. Wonderful. I'm Danielle Brown. Nice Very to nice to meet you. From Tapestry. Wonderful. Yes. Nice to meet you. Yes, and my team is here as well. Wonderful. <laughs> so Diana is um, over talent acquisition per Tapestry. And oh, cool. we were Long talking side. about... Way which way? This way? Oh, okay. We were talking about, um, you know, the great work that you've done and the great work that Bowie State okay. has done because you guys okay. have done okay. an incredible job. Okay. And so Diana wanted to okay. present something to you. So I'm going to step out the way. And I think something <laughs> may be coming up on the screen. So on behalf of Tapestry and our foundation, we would like to present you and Bowie State with a donation of $5,000. Thank you. You're so welcome. Oh my God. This means it's life-changing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very life-changing. I can't wait this. to work with you. I um, did not wear waterproof mascara. <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> so excuse me, but... Um, it is life-changing for the students. The students are, um, the limited resources sometimes will limit their creativity. And as a professor, it breaks your heart to see that. And you know you can give but so much. I'm running out of clothes to donate. Um, so this is life-changing for our department, for our students. Um, thank you so much. I'm just... Thank you. Thank you. It's, our, it's our pleasure. We can't wait to work with you, and thank you to Harlem Fashion Row for making this connection. Yes, and, and, and again, Harlem Fashion Row, since I met them, thank you for hearing us. A lot of times we're talking and like you guys heard us, um, and it doesn't go unnoticed, so I'm just, makeup is done. <laughs> thank you so much. Genuinely from the bottom of my heart, and um, my students now have seen me cry. Still better be doing your work. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. You're so welcome. This is a great way to meet. Yes, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs>